He was like, come to the main stage then. And I started walking that way. And he's like, no, 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 main stage. And I was like, what? That wasn't the main stage, that massive stage I saw. And he's like, no, 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 the main stage is over there, bro. And I've opened these doors, bro. I swear to God, it looked about 20,000 people. Arena. It was definitely over 10,000 people, bro. And I was like, oh my God. The killer, killer, podcast. Killer, killer, official <laughs> you need the Kellervision app. 24 7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Beatbox created. Killer, killer. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer, killer podcast. Yes, people, Killer Keller podcast live and direct central London or central as you need to be. Big shout to graffitikings.co.uk. Elsewhere, big shout to my people's aerosol clothing for their new collaboration range alongside Majuri Art. New clothing range right there. Head over to aerosol.co.uk or junglistmovement.com. You know how I'm doing it. Street culture 24-7. And uh, yeah, we, got, we, are, we are transmitting from London to Nottingham. That's correct, isn't it, Window Kid? How are we? Hey, we're in Nottingham City right now, bro. That's where we live. That's where I'm from. That's where I'll always be. That's what I'm saying, see? Now, there's a lot. Of, I've got a lot of history with Nottingham, so I'm looking forward to this one. Okay. I'm pretty savvy with it. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Window Kid, I mean, to define him, he, he's you, you're quite the uh, creative butterfly. DJ, MC. I do a bit of everything, bro. I do a bit of everything. I've been... Producing and DJing and running events and running radio shows and spitting and everything since I was a youth. And I've basically done every genre. I've done a bit of hip hop. I do dubstep, grime, bassline, garage. I just kind of just knock about with everything, bro. Yeah. And you know what? There's something about the Nottingham water, apart from the the, 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 the male to female ratio, which is kind of folklore in a way. It's, it's become this kind of folklore thing that there's something like five to one. Isn't what? it on women and men? Yeah, apparently. Well, this is, I don't know if I'm just used to it or what, because I don't see it, but then people do come to, like, I don't think it is folklore because people come to the city and still say it. People come to the city and they're like, yo, bro, it's right what they say. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, so maybe I'm just used to it, bro. But there's definitely a lot of girls here, but there's also a lot of men. And I've got a missus, bro. So I'm just, I'm really looking at the man at the minute. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. Don't you worry about that. I'm with you, you know. It's, 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 <laughs> appreciation of creation. That's, yeah, that's boy, yeah boy. Um, But yeah, uh, Nottingham is, uh, yeah, l- largely a, a, such a creative city and like the amount of people that I've crossed paths with over the year that super diverse, man. Like, I don't think Nottingham gets enough props for its, uh, yeah, its emergence of different genres and just the, the overall music scene being one of, you know, positive energies, no matter what side of the genres you float on. Yeah, I think because it is technically quite a small city, would you say? Like, yeah. it's, not, it's not huge, is it? So yeah. I think, I think um, stuff doesn't like kind of, dilute into different corners of the city like Nottingham people just like music do you know what yeah. I'm saying so and there's a lot of appreciation for each other in Nottingham there doesn't seem to be any sort of like um, I don't know there is obviously competition wherever you go but everyone just has a love for music in general so there's a lot of crossover of genres I think yeah yeah you're right you're right I had a bunch of mates from back in the day that were um, you know Scorsese yeah 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 of course yeah. Legend. yeah that's my guy that's my guy, Lee Rams and all those guys. Hold tight, Nottingham. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mr. Fo- Do you remember Mr. 45 from back in the day? He was like a hip hop. He was way before me, but he was lucky. Yeah, yeah. I know like uh, Juggernaut, you know Juggernaut? Yeah. Yeah, Juggernaut's a legend and no jugs. Um, you know, I, I was I was more grime, do you know what I'm saying? I grew up on li- listening to grimes. So I was more that side, but obviously, yeah, a lot of respect to them, them guys. Well, like Snowy and them. You know, he's my guy. Um, yeah. but like talking old school, it was all like, um, no, nah, like who, 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 like <clears throat> you, you go blank when you're on there. When you, like, <laughs> 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 anyway, old school, not even guy. Anyway, you remember Warico? Yeah, yeah. I was actually in the studio Warico with Warico the other day, so that was a that was a full circle moment. So I used to listen Ooh. to him. crazy. Got your old, you got your fan goals and your, you know what I'm saying, shots movement. That and then like, um, 
military crew, like when all they used to be clashing back in the day. That was, I, uh, yeah, that was when I was listening to like, I was a little bit younger though. So I was listening to, when I, when I was kind of like, growing up and started spitting, I was listening to like Shadow and Marvin clashing. Yeah. That's what kind of I was growing up on and got, what got me spitting a lot of it. I've got a shout out Pubman as well. There's an MC called Pubman from Nottingham. I don't know if you... Pubman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a producer called Gaz. I grew up listening to all them, man. And um, I just had to be involved, bro. Telling you, man. Oh, who was the other guy? Shorty Blitz from Don't Hate the Player, the DJ. He's, he's from Nottingham. Is he really? Yeah, he's a Nottingham man. Really? Didn't know that. Obviously, yeah. Mr. Jan's a Nottingham boy as well, isn't he? Yeah, that's right. There was a club I used to play. I used to play, you know, as, as a beatboxer, I used to play down at... Um, there was a club that was downstairs at a crazy turbo sound system, like two different areas where you could dance, like drum and bass and hip-hop. That's why you see Mr. Jan play all the time. No, well, I think a lot of the clubs have changed over the years in Knott's. Uh, they do. They turn around pretty quickly. I remember it going, coming and going. I can't remember the name of it. Yeah, yeah. But that's like the landscape right now, isn't it, bro? You know? I know, bro. I'm trying to remember what club's names are in Nottingham now, bro. It's been that long. It's <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's that thing we use, microphones and stages and shit, you know? <laughs> oh, no, bro. I'm, my, my income's gone a bit weird at the minute, bro. It, do, it does cross my mind. I mean, you know, it, and, and more power to the world of podcasts and you guys coming on and saying hello. But a lot of the artists, man, I, I, I genuinely hope this acts as a, you know, a, a, a platform to, to get these messages across because the income streams and the things that you're doing without getting too morbid, it's like, you know, you come back afresh to these things. Yeah. It's all totally, you got to come, you got to come different, don't you? You got to switch it up and it's a crazy time to even be thinking that far ahead at the moment. I know, man. I know. And uh, like, you kind of, you, and you end up like just, I, I try not to get too down about it or what. Mm. Kind of, it is what it is. Everyone's in their own scenario. I have, it's not like I've got kids to feed. Like, I've, I can still get deliveries like twice a day. Um, but, and then like, do you know, like when I look at like a, a festival that I was booked for last year, they got cancelled. And then like the festival flyer will come up this year and I'm not on it. And I'm like, Oh, <laughs> mate, honestly, heartbreaking, ain't it? No, but then there's other festivals where last year I was on like a small stage and this year I'm on a big one. So like, like I say, man, it's swings and roundabouts. You can't get down about this kind of thing, man. Nah. Uh, where did it all begin? I mean, we talked about the sound clashes, but uh, you've been doing your thing for a minute and I'm I'm now starting to piece, put pieces together in my head. I'm like, yo, like... Okay, well, I'll give you a little bit of a background talk. Do it. <laughs> tell them, tell them, tell them. So, obviously, like I said, man, I was growing up listening to a lot of grime, a lot of dubstep, to be honest with you, man. And um, my stepbrother was a DJ, shout out Lucas Starnes, LS DJ. Oh, and I just used to, when I used to watch him DJ, when he was a couple years older than me, and I used to just think, yo, that looks sick, man, I want to be involved. And he started going to play in these clubs and that, so I used to kind of go with him a bit underage and just kind of sneak in kind of thing. Yeah. And I just used to think, yo, I want to do this. And he went to a, a, a college called Confetti. And when I finished school, I was like, yo, I want to go. It was, it was a music college. So I went in there, and, I, and at this moment in time, I DJed a little bit. I'd never produced before, but I was I had a lot of bars. And for some reason, when I got when I went into Confetti, I had it in my head that girls didn't like MCs, girls like producers and DJs. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I was like 16, 17, and I was just thinking, yo, I want to do what the... I want to do what Who the told girls you that? Who <laughs> yeah. told you that? I, know, I just got it in my head, bro. I was smoking too much weed, I think. And, um, <laughs> I can't do it. I can't, I can't, you can't do it. It's the, it's yeah. the feminine so, rule. So I started producing, loving that, bro. Kind of did, did a few bits and bobs with that. I started DJing. Doing, I, did, I started a radio show called The Window Show. Which is where the name derived from. Uh, well, I had the name before that, actually, bro. Did uh, ya? The name came from school, bro. Everyone just used to call me Window at school. It's an, it's another story. You'd have to ask me that question in a minute. It's a long one. <laughs> um, hey. But basically, I was uh, I was running a couple of club nights and um, and stuff like that. And on my radio show, bro, I was always DJing. It was like practice hours for, for all the MCs. Mm. So like Snowy, Kaiser, Mez... Um, like bare people used to come Gang. Through, shout out Dace Plate like the Diz like loads of people and, right. um, I was basically always on the deck just running the tunes and every now and again I'd spit a couple bars and like a couple man used to be like yo like why are you not jumping on the mic like what Snowy always said he was like you're better at MC than you're DJ bro fuck that like <laughs> Charming. <laughs> and I basically dragged off the mic, uh, off the decks, bro, and like put in front of the mic. Like everyone in the scene was just like, Mad. you're an MC now. 
And I was like, right, and okay, I, that was what I always was from the start. Do you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Another full circle moment. I was like, I was like, right, okay. So then, and then I got to know Brucey. Brucey brought me to the studio with him, and we made five pound bet, and five pound bet did really well. Mm. And that was it. We kind, of, I went, kind of went from there, and never, never turned back. Mad serendipity going on, just yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, in the right place at the right time, and it suddenly clicks. Everything that you kind of, kind of had orbiting around you just. Yeah, I was just doing it all literally for the love of the music, bro. Like whatever it was, whether I was DJing or producing or spitting, I was just like, I want to be there. I love the music, and then I, obviously it just ended up pushing me into the right place. Yeah, like you say. How do you get that track? Actually, I've got a more broader question. How do you get? For a lot of people out there, it'd just be like, what? So you did that, did that, did that, did that. And you do all these different things within the same breath of output. How do you micromanage that in your head? How do you mic at the time at its peak in the early days when you weren't, co- you know what I mean? You may not have had a manager. You may not have had a, you know, a producer of your radio show or anything like that. How the fuck do you go from... I'm a DJ. No, I'm an MC. I go live. I DJ live. I've got <laughs> MCs. I go on my own. Like, how do you, how do you compartmentalize that? Well, it, none of it, none of it was like big. Like it was just, it was just like a little radio space that, um, that I was able to just go in and just basically just go like, I, I asked for a slot and they went, yeah, yeah. Seven to nine Tuesdays. Still remember, bro. It was some of the best times of my life. Mm-hmm. And then that was it. I was just, as soon as the word came around, everyone could go there and just spit bars and just have a drink and have a blaze and, that just became the hub for Nottingham Grime at them times. And then on the side, like, obviously I was just writing bars. I didn't, I didn't expect me to do anything with them. I was just writing bars because I enjoyed doing it. Producing, I was just sat at home at night, just, just producing in my other spare time. And then with the, with the, my mate Lucas was running this event called Dutty and I just helped him out with that, bro. And then I ended up just fucking playing the, the three till four set, the, the final set that was running all the bangers at night. And it all kind of, everyone just kind of ended up becoming like a big crew. Like everyone was just kind of, would go dutty, would go radio, would listen to my beats, would spit on them, and just like I don't know, man. It was just like you say, small city, like everyone just appreciating each other's shit. And I always felt like the there is an um, a localized audience for the Nottingham scene, which I've always found really charming. Like the people that are in the area totally like love their scenes music. That that. Do you know what I mean? It's so yeah, yeah, yeah. so Proper. cool. Papa, everyone, everyone's like Nottingham's the best. Nottingham's the best. Like if I'm Nottingham, you not you think Nottingham's the best. Like all city have a like like what's the word? Like they feel like a patriot of their own city. Like but yeah, yeah it's, it is one of them. People from Nottingham just feel gassed to be from Nottingham. Yeah, and then there's the out of fringes. You know, the more county area, the county lines. You know, the areas where people come in from as well. Um, loads of loads of little boroughs outside of the the centre, isn't there? Yeah, 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 definitely, bro. But I'm glad to be from Knotts, man. I learned I learned a lot from a lot of people, and it's got me where I am today. And I'm I'm happy to got yeah. no problems with no people. Just love for every man, really, bro. With pride, bro. What, tell me about the, the 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 name. Tell me about how how that came about. It's always been a secret. You know that. Are we going to get it out? Or are we, is, is this is going down. We're going to hear the window kid secret right now. Come on, tell him. Tell all. Let's and go. I, and I'm going to tell you now: the window kid name story secret is the most whack story you ever. <laughs> I think, as far as I'm concerned, it's whack. So, right, check this out. So, at school, yeah, when I was about. 14 or something, mm. there was a few reasons that made people think I was scared of windows. Yeah. So the name Window Kid came from people thinking I was scared of windows. Number one, <laughs> I'm trying to get, they were trying to get. <laughs> Give me an example. <laughs> an example. Okay. Okay. Example. Yeah. We're, we're at my mate Mike's house. Yeah. He, he runs Deep Rock, MD. Yeah. Um, and I, yeah, I used to run Deep Rock with MD at these times as well. But anyway, we're at his house and MD's brother, senior, was had this air rifle out the window and he was going to he was gonna ping a postman with this air rifle. Uh-huh. I'm like, no, 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 don't be doing that. Don't be that. They go, no, come, 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 come to the window. And I'm going, I'm not going near that window. He's going to shoot a postman. I'm not on it. That's number one. Okay. <laughs> right. Number two, you know when was like a youth, yeah? Like when you'd have like sleepovers when you'd have like, like a proper young kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like when you're like 
don't know, like nine, ten, eleven. I don't fucking Mate, know. I still gaff sleepovers. <laughs> <laughs> when you tell ghost stories at sleepovers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only the other weekend. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> my, my main ghost story is one that my dad told me when I was a kid about going to this window, opening the curtains, yeah, and this fucking thing popping up in the window, yeah? Oh, yeah. That's number two. Right, right. <laughs> number three, I think there's four things. Number three, I always used to, people say, that, you're scared of windows. And I was like, no. I says, but if you think about it though, if you fall out of, a, of story one, like zero, you're not going to die. Anything above that, you're dying, right? So <laughs> that, that means like, generally you are going to die if you drop out of a window. Anyway, um, and then the last one, bro, we was walking down the street and was lit when I was like 16. Just a few people walking around the ends. And I thought I saw a nun in a window. I looked at a window, yeah, and I was like, did you, did you man see that? And they were like, no, and I was like, I thought I just saw a nun in the window. <laughs> and then one guy called Neve went, yo, this guy, window kid, like, this guy's scared of windows. And they just said the window kid, like the guy who's the kid who's scared of windows, bro. And then it locked and I never saw the end of it. Right. I'm 27 now, bro. I was about, about 15, 16 when that got hit. Dude, that's like two minutes, what, 10, 11 years of, of the fear of window. Can I, so when you, when you get uh, past the second or third floor on, uh, uh, in a block of flats or um, in, a, in a rather plush house, do you, do you, do you get scared to look out the window? Do you know what's funny, bro? With age, I've started to get more vertigo. So. Yeah, vertigo. So maybe uh, maybe that's also maybe I'm just full of full circle stories, man. Maybe that's the name of your album, Vertigo. But maybe that's a good idea. Or maybe I always wanted to bring out an album called Windows Media Player. <laughs> Strong. 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 Yeah. Strong. Or, or or one or a track about you being high called Double Glazing. <gasps> oh. Window liquor. People love saying that. Uh, I think that's just a common denominator, isn't it? Because of uh, Aphex Twin. And do you know what everyone, do you know do you want to hear, do you want to hear what I'm thinking about calling my tour this year, <laughs> or this end of this year, hopefully. Go on. You, you know, you know, I'm into going to going for a few drinks, don't you? I do indeed. I'm gutted. This? I'm not up it. I'm gutted. It's not then now they're open. Go um, on. <laughs> window Kids Club Crawl. Oh, that, oh, that's cold. Yeah. Good, oh it? fuck with that! I'm feeling that, yeah. You could literally do uh, a a tour in each city in the district where there is most pub and bar life. Yeah, that's definitely a thing. I mean, it could the night could even start on a bit of a pub crawl and then end in the club. Yeah, yeah. There you go. You and the after party could be like some super fan who's you know on Twitter. Or just go around to his house and smash the place to pieces. Exactly. I mean, you know, you know, like some fans love that shit, don't they? They they like the idea of like you being everything that they want and would happily have you come in and turn the place out. Yeah. Bottles of this, bags of that, a few brasses, just absolutely just clear the place up. Yeah. Yeah. And like pretty much like a pirate radio station after the <laughs> after, yeah, after the event. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about time. I mean, the, the radio station era. We're talking at times where, you know, I mean, grime, grime is pirate. Pirate. It's 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 not a spectator sport. You've got to be in the arena. You're in the dragons. When you get into a pirate station situation, you're in the dragons' layer. Yeah, 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 definitely, bro. I think that's probably why I find it. Even if it was my own show, I still find it quite like when I did the window show. I still find it quite intimidating to jump on the mic because it's like, oh, you got all MCs, like, and it was like, if a random if a random guy got brought through by his mate and then mm. he got the mic, it's a case of everyone's like, right, what have you got? Yeah, it's not just going like, to gas him up for no reason. It's like, right, and, and if you and if you're a bit shit, it's you're gonna you're gonna probably feel it. You're gonna kind of get nudged nudged towards the doorway. It's just like, yeah, no, you're not really spitting because you're not on it. But then some people would walk in, like this guy called Broads, this this little white guy from. Cotton where he's from, I don't want to guess and get it wrong. And he um, and he came in and just used to come with the old school scattiest, like I hope you didn't find this offensive, but chavy, chavy like flow, and it was raw. And then everyone was like, yo, who's this guy? And I was like, I don't know, he's he's lit. <laughs> That's fucking great. Yeah, it was it was yeah, it was bang on, bro. It was raw shit. That, I mean, if you were to like put yourself put it into context now, because it's quite hard to believe that those were the 
the, the times. And I still feel like they exist in many respects. It still goes down like that. But uh, crime's taken different... It's, it's, it's almost like had a different formation, hasn't it? It's been, it's been realigned and there's now... There's definitely... Uh, heads around the table, you know, like the Knights of Templar or some shit, where the people that run grime are they, these are figureheads, and they're all in position. They're they're eating, you know what I mean? Like, but there yeah, is an yeah. underground scene that is like total athleticism. Yeah, no, I, well, obviously we, I, I obviously wasn't in the, the first time round for grime. I was just like a kid listening to it at that time. But this was kind of like when I can, I can remember it was kind of like when Stormzy was going to like do his first tour. So when grime had its resurgence, and it was like that point. Yeah. Where yeah. Skeptor was obviously back doing his thing. Storms, he blew up. He was doing his first tour. I think it was his first tour and he took Mez with him. And Mez was always on on, on my show and a uh, shout out Mez. We was always dead cool. And then he got mm. that shout. And then it was like, it was like ringing around the city like, yo, Grimes back and Storms is doing a tour and Mez is on it. And like, so it was Fire. kind of, it was like the second, the second, um, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, the, the second tour. wave. Exactly, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, I toured with Lethal Bizzle actually. Did you? Uh, yeah, I toured with him on his second album. I've met Bizzle before. He's an absolute G. He's a lovely bloke, isn't he? Yeah, he's funny, man. You can see why the top boys stay top. Yeah. It's like they learnt, they learnt through the hard graft. And uh, even now, I, I would argue that, that, that the scene, the music scene, does not give it, it enough dues that they've paid. Those pioneers at the top. I know, I know, I know. <sighs> Took so much hit. So, so moving on. I mean, you know, which you know, bass music as a whole, you totally ad- adapted to the the environment of that, and like you say, hip hop, garage, um, just pounding on the live shows and whatnot. So um, I, I, t- I tell you quite a cool story, right? So how that came about. Like Bruce, he was doing a lot of bassline songs at the time after we made Five Pound Better and that, and I was just mm. trying to figure out what I was even going to bring out, yeah. and. Um, and then he started doing a lot of hosting for DJs. And I was thinking, that looks cool. Like, just going around the UK, like, he went part-time in his job. And I was like, yo, he's making money as well. This looks sick. Yeah. And then one night, um, we was, was uh, Bruce was playing at Bass Fest. And I was there. Darksy, uh, one of my best mates, was playing at... Um, Playing on the main stage, I didn't, I didn't even know where the main stage was. And I was just, and I was just there. And he was, and Darksy was like, do you want to host for me on the mic? And I was like, bro, I've never done it before. And he was like, my brother, do you want to do it? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, come to the main stage then. And I started walking that way. And he's like, no, 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 main stage. And I was like, what? That wasn't the main stage, that massive stage I saw. And he's like, no, 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 the main stage is over there, bro. And I've opened these doors, bro. I swear to God, dude, it looked about 20,000 people. It Arena. It was definitely over 10,000 people, bro. And I was like, oh my God. And he was like, you're still on it? And I was like, ah, yeah. I'm on it. I'm on it. This Got is like life, life opportunity right here. Yeah. 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 So I went on, bro. I absolutely loved it. I, I was able, I was, I was obviously nervous, bro, but I was able to push them to one side so, so easily just because I was like, since I was a kid, I've always wanted to be on stage mm. and I've just been given one. And it was like, right, I'm having it. This is mine. That's fucking fire. I know. And then, and I joined the crew cast crew after that. Shout out my manager, Joe. That's what's that, Joe? And, uh, and he just kind of, Helped me out and pushed me onto those more shows with Darkseid, and then that's it. Now I've been touring the UK. I've been touring the world actually, kind of for like three years. It's mad, isn't it? How like the the stage is your safety, it's your it's your it's your playpen. And when you've got such a like level of audience like that, far stretching so far back, it's almost like after the first I don't know, few sentences, you get completely like connected with. Oh yeah, this is what I'm doing from now on. <laughs> I'm, I'm not even. I can't even see this ten thousand or whatever many people because they're just a they're just a a, a landscape. Yeah. I can do this. This is easy. Well, now I've noticed that the more people, the easier it is because if there's if there's ten thousand people, you can't pinpoint anyone. Like it's just a it's just a crowd. How yeah. about put put you in front of ten people? You can see everyone's expression on their face, and that would be a lot more intimidating for me now. Scarily so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and when we played at uh, we played at Leeds Festival, I think that was my biggest ever. Um, biggest of a crowd about 19,000 people bro like, that, just a normal day you know just a normal day I know <laughs> how was, many people do you think you connect with a day not not, not, not that many people <laughs> and, uh, in your life and I, I, but the thing is that I, I wish I could remember it bro because at that point I was so mashed up because we'd been we did I think it was four shows that weekend we was on a tour bus 
me and all the crew cast a lot and Leeds was our final show on, at night on the Saturday or Sunday night or whatever it was yeah. and I can't over remember being there if I'm honest with <laughs> yeah. um, do you take your uh, extracurricular alcoholic beer uh, activities into the uh, into the arena yes Good for you. I'm a big advocate of that. I'm not even joking. Like, I don't know about all this Red Bull and backstage, no drinking, P's and Q's. I'm not in it. No, no, no. I, I, everyone knows I like a drink, mate. I, I get that. Like, do you know what it is as well? If I have a, if, if you play a baseline tune or whatever kind of tune you're right now, I'd be like, yep, yeah, good song. I like that song. You give me like two beers and put it on, I'll go, eh! <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Like, so if I'm on the stage having more fun, People yeah. bounce off what because obviously I'm in front of them. If I'm looking like I'm having bare fun, they're gonna have more fun. If I look like I'm not having that much fun, they're probably not gonna have much fun. So I might as well I might as well be like on the same vibe as everyone else. The beer test gotta be. Yeah. So, I mean, you've got to be on the same wavelength, you know. That's what I'm saying, man. I, I like to I like to get some macati out of it. Yeah, and after as well. Yeah. yeah. Can do burn both. You know, you burn in both ends, isn't it? That's the only thing. That's the yeah. only downside about a tour in life. Yeah, every now and again, it does get a bit on top. Like we, when we played, we played in like Zanti, then we flew back, then we flew out to to, uh, to Ibiza to play there, and then we flew back from there. And our flight had to abort landing in Nottingham. It had to go to Birmingham, and we were actually flying from Birmingham in the morning to Iamapa to another show. Yeah. So I was saying to the I was saying to the, the the flight people I was like yo can I get off here then because I'm flying from here in a few hours. What me? And they were like no. Nah. And I was like you've got to go back to Nottingham. I was like bro I'm flying from here like you've flown me here. I was meant landing knots. Yeah 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 yeah. I ended up getting a bit angry, bro. I ended up being taken off the flight and then brought back onto the flight. But um, no, my, what did you wig out on them? Yeah, I got angry, bro. I got angry. Yeah. <laughs> Piss me off, bro. And I and I have to have I get a bit scared of flying, bro. So I'd had a couple of gin and tonics and a couple of Valium. So I, my head was all over the place. So I um by the time I like, by the time I got back to knots, basically, bro, I had about the, the space of time to have like an hour and a half sleep to get up to get back on a flight to get a five and a half hour flight to Iron Apple, bro. I ended See. up can, I ended up cancelling on Iron Apple. I said to my manager, I was like, I can't do it, mate. I says I can't can't physically can't physically do it. And then I, I woke up, <laughs> I woke up and I rang Darcy and I was like Oh mate, sorry man, sorry I haven't come to Iapa. Thinking he's already there, and he goes, "I didn't go either, bro." <laughs> <laughs> hey, can you imagine if you did show up and he wasn't there? Jeez. Yeah, that'd have been pointless for me. You'd have been, to, you would have to get the decks out, mate. That's I know, I'd have, been, I'd have been cool with that. The only downside about the other, the other thing, you know, this is why we're not advocating. You know, to be safe when you're entertaining, entertaining yourself with alcohol and uh, consumption. The 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 the, the uh flip side of the coin is you have these massive periods of consistent touring yeah? and yeah. there's been some examples where you come off of tour with the same mischief and just continue into your downtime it's almost like it's weird it's like it's almost like ptsd do you know what i mean yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Where's my free bottle of, of rum? Where's my free bottle of whiskey? You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. and your missus is just in the kitchen saying, "You, you've changed." <laughs> I know, but it, and do you know what else is weird? Though? Like, I'll go to the show, and I'm like, and my ride is like a bottle of Grey Goose and lemonade. Do you know, yeah, if, I'm, yeah. do you know if I'm like in Knott's Bro and I'm having a, a drink here or wherever? The last thing I would ever drink is vodka and lemonade. <laughs> I don't know why. I want to go to the club. It's like, no, I need my vodka, my ice, and my lemonade. Like, it must be because it's refreshing or something. I don't know. Man. I know. I think I, 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 I feel you on that, and I think a lot of that is because um, it feels, it feels like you're going to work, but it's also an exercise. It feels like, yo, I'm, it, it, the beer is like that headspace where I'm, I'm with good company, chilling, sitting by. A, on a wood, you know, sitting on a a, a bench and a sofa, uh, uh, a wooden table, you know, in a pub environment, and it's, you know, whatever's playing. But when you're in those environments, it's like, yo, it's almost like you need a particular drink for the particular headspace. Yeah, 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 and it almost might kind of because like as soon as I have one when I get back in the club, yeah, and I have that vodka and that lemonade, I'll probably just think, right, I'm back. Mm. <laughs> it's, like, it's like my spinach, like if I was Popeye, I don't know, it's weird. For real, I think that genuinely is the case. I think a lot of people hold, you know, these are these are anchor things that that cause a reaction, isn't it? Yeah, and vodka just gets you absolutely hyper, doesn't it? Anyway, oh. so 
half of the half of the vibe. Oh, mate, honestly, that that for me is the the one. Like, if you know you're on those sort of night shifts, yeah, go have something, can't you? Because brand brandy and like whiskey and stuff like that is a bit is a bit heavy and a bit sticky, and it's not very like it's kind of like a sitting down chilling one. Yeah. But then, like a gin, a gin tea with a lime is a little bit dry. <laughs> gin tea, with, like that's like it's nice, it's refreshing. It's also dry. The yeah. vodka and the lemonade is just juicy, light, see throughness that just gets you absolutely off your face. Off your face, and you know the other thing about vodka, which is it's very unsung as a as a as a popular drink, is you can slowly reduce the chaser with it. So if you really are in that zone of like, I'm going to get fucked tonight. Yeah. Just reduce the chaser, and it still tastes no different. You, but obviously, you'll know when you've hit like the uh, on the rocks side. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, That's it straight. Nice one, it though. If you have it with some, like, oh, yeah, it's bad. Bro, have you been Poland and you've ever had the vodka? No. But they that shit goes down like milk. Really mad. They got some other level vodka over there. I might have to try some. Do you know what I've got in the in the freezer right now? Go on. Eighty eight percent vodka. 88 but what's the brand what's that it's some I can't remember bro it's it's not in English I've got a feeling it's in like Polish or something we, we've bought it because we're making we're making like um, we're like infusing sweets with like um, THC and you have to use vodka these are and do you know what personally these aren't for me because I don't like edibles I don't even I don't really I don't blaze weed mm. we're, just, we're just just doing it because it's locked down and what else is there to do so <laughs> that's the only reason it's here but the other night when we had a three mates trying having a drink I looked in the kitchen and they're shot in it and I was like, no, 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 not even for drinking, man. Oh, that must have fucked him up hard. That's for like stripping wallpaper. Yeah, yeah, that's some serious, yeah, that's some serious stuff. Uh-huh. But again, you know, in in Poland, that, that would probably be the order of the day, but the way that they make it, I guess it's because, you know, it's this, this, this is their local delicacy. They yeah. just smash out a park with some other smooth, cold levels. Mad. Yeah, I want to try some kind of right now. All this alcohol chat. <laughs> I know, man. Listen, I, I feel for I feel for um I feel for uh, publicans because I was walking down the road the other day and I saw um my local, which is scarily close to where I live. Uh and I just looked at it, I was like, man, it's been a year nearly. Or at least it feels like as I know it's been on and off a little bit, but you know. Yeah, but properly, I know what you mean. Yeah, it has. Yeah, and I just kind of felt to myself, man, you know, like we're all getting on to survive and making adjustments to suit. But those poor fuckers, they ain't, they're just like stuck in a time lapse, you know? No, I know. The pub's stuck in a time lapse, but they've got a bit older. That's what's a bit dark about it. Yeah. They've all got, yeah, yeah, totally, totally. It's almost like they've been frozen in time. They're, they're just getting old and weathered. And, and I mean, I know shit will change. And everyone adapts, yeah. but it's a it's a very stark warning that you know what I mean. If you, yeah, but community. There's, there's a bar at the end of my road, yeah, called Bar Seventy One. I think it's called Bar Seventy One. I lived there long, but there's a there's a little Indian guy that owns it. He's safe as fuck, man. And, yeah. uh, and I obviously felt quite bad for him when they had to close and blah blah blah. And then now the the news agent's next to it. When I go in, he's working behind the counter in there now. Still with, a big, still with a big smile on his face, like, don't worry, we'll be back in soon. And I'm like, yeah, man, can't wait. <laughs> Community spirit. I'm all about that. Yeah. That's banging. And I'm feeling that. Yeah. Well, it won't be it won't be too much longer. Amazon Prime. Yeah. Give us give us the scoop on this. What what, what was the I mean, what's the deal? What what made you write that? Um, right. So do you know a producer called Firstborn? Rings bells, heavy bells, yeah. He's, he's an old, he, back in the day, he used to make a lot of bass line and he was a bit of a... That's a, right. A legend. Yeah. Now, now he does low-key um, produce a lot of um, drill and a bit of like, I think he does a bit of hip-hop and rap and Afro beats. I think he does a bit of everything now, just kind of like, just producing in the background, you know what I mean? He's just a, he's a bit of a G. I think he produced on Nines' latest album and stuff, so he's obviously doing well. Right. And... Um, my manager and his manager just chatted and then they said, it's, let's chuck him in the studio together. So I went to London to meet him, went in, his, went in the studio and he's like, you know, we play you a few beats. He played a few beats and then one of them was just very obviously like a bit of a window kid beat and it's the one I used. And then he kind of played it and looked at me like, and I was like, we're going to use this one, aren't we? He was like, yeah, we're using this one. 
So he's like, have you got any like ideas? I went, nope. He goes, you got any bars? I went, nope. And um, I says, have you got any beers? He went, nope. I went back in a little bit. <laughs> and then, so I've nipped off to the shop, come back, gave him one. I've had one. I was like, right. And we just started thinking, technically the song kind of makes no sense. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> it starts off me in a bar. Then it goes, then it goes to me chatting about getting a girl round. Then I'm singing about where's the gin and tonic. It kind of does, it kind of doesn't, but it kind of, I kind of just wanted a fun song about, about trying to move to a girl, having a drink, then talking about just a few other random bits that Window Kid would normally talk about. But then we ended up adding the, where's the gin just just because why not? It just sounded amazing. You know, and this, you know, this is just, it's probably more based on phonetics rather than the actual you know the the depth of lyrical content, and you're known for your like chants. You know what I mean? Like you got like some like legendary chants. You know what I mean? And that's yeah. that's what people perceive. It's kind of like it kind of works for you as a character. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely, man. Like I, I just find like I just find the beat super duper fun. So I just thought, right, let's just cram a load of fun into this song. It doesn't really need to have like a solid narrative from start to end. It doesn't need to need to have doesn't need to have a proper um, perfected storyline. It just needed to just have some just some crazy fun shit going on, and that's basically what we went for. And obviously, because we it was such a random, we had like a few hours in the studio. I just met the guy, just showed me the beat. It was just like let's just get out of this um, the best we can, and and we was by the time we left, we were like, mate, we loved it so much, and then. Obviously, made made the video super sick as well. Video super sick, getting a lot of love out there as well. That yeah, man, it's doing, it seems to be doing well. It's only been out for like a day. It's had like twenty thousand streams or something. So Got a lot of love. There's a renaissance, and I say ah, it's not a renaissance. It's been there the whole time, but Garage is it's got it's like a hardcore follower. You know what I mean? You know them. Yeah. I feel like I feel like no one dislikes Garage as well. I don't understand why it took a dip in the late nineties. I don't understand. Yeah. And it's like always been about since, but just kind of chilling in the back a little bit. Like it's a, it's yeah. a, it's a mad one. Like I know what I haven't met anyone in my life that said, do you like garage? And they say, no, it's just it's like kind of impossible. Yeah. I mean, fucking easy deserves an MBE. That's for, for real. It really does, bro. It really does. He's been holding that thing, even in the like hardest times, you know, him and Wookie, those old school boys. Wookie's ridiculous. Is Wookie the one who did that Gabrielle mix? Yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah. That's one of the best songs of all time, I feel like. I feel you. I feel you. Like, these are these are the people that you kind of lent on to, to for the okay sign of like a scene, you know? How's it doing? It's good. They're still out there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fully. Fully, bro. Don't you want to be that kind of... I feel like I would love, you know... If you were to, you know, be on your deathbed saying, you know, what did you, what was your contribution, you know, to, to be that character and say, yo, I was, I was that guy. You could depend on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and even when I'm gone, I'm still that guy. Like, you're still, still that guy. Yeah, like in a real kind of John Peel kind of way, you know. Yeah, yeah. Fully, fully, bro. That's cold, yeah. So the Nottingham scene's good. I mean, you know, you, you're charging, the, you're with the flag right now, you know what I mean? The, Trailblazing that shit. That's it, bro. That's it. And all this talk about garage and alcohol is making me want to just fucking yes, my hat. <laughs> hey, listen, I'm saying when when we get unlocked and we're able to fucking come up, I'm gonna come to Nottingham. I'm gonna see all of yous. All You're of my more than welcome, mate. You can stay at mine anytime. Bro, that'd be fire. Like I've been up there for a minute. I need to get yeah, I need to get that rock city vibe. Get some, get in the studio. Get big shout out to Big Trev as well. Do you know Big Trev? Yeah, Big Trev's a legend, man. That's my guy. Yeah, Big Trev's a legend. Everyone knows he's a legend. I don't, I don't actually know him that personally. I've just heard his name so many times over the years, and no one's ever had a bad word. It's always really good words. And when I see him, it's like a you're right, bro. But personally, I, I'd like to meet him properly, like because he sounds like an absolute legend. He's an absolute category A legend, like. Like you say, everyone knows him. Don't have to be into particular things. He used to, he used to. Have, oh, I can't remember the name of his crew back in the day. He was on Westwood and everything. He toured with like crazy heads back in the day. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. He's he's he was one of the main players in uh, at least the UK hip hop back in the like when I man ninety two ninety one like before, I was a kid. I was a kid and he was like 
they were no- notorious, those guys. It sounds like nowadays he has a lot of, um, um, what was I going to say? He just kind of looks after the youth, really. Like He just, mm. just kind of makes sure everyone's going down the right path and inspires yeah. to kind of just, just be good people and make good music and just like, he just sounds like a bit of a legend, man. Yeah, like we said. It's the way forward, isn't it? It's yeah, the way yeah. forward. No, no. Well, I'm going to love you and leave you, brother. It's a pleasure having a chat, for real. Yeah, lovely to see you, bro. Yeah, you too, you too. Yo, we are like that, window kid. Hold tight, my brother. Killer Killer Podcast, we are like him was out of fashion. Gang a lang a ding dong, gang a lang a go. Big right. shout out to you, my brother. Hold tight, all the Nottingham crew. Wow. And uh, yeah, mad love. Good Don't forget you, to share. Take care, people. Peace. Safe.